tonight is going to be a little different. We're going to have obviously our moments discussion, but I'm going to pitch this to my son and he's going to start us out, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tonight's been awesome um, already and we're about to get into some more um, some more conversation. You, you have a, a word to share. Um, I do. And I mentioned to everybody that if they have questions that we would love to hear those questions live on the chat, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Facebook or um, our Life Changers Church website, um, we have chats on all platforms where you can send in your questions live tonight based on what, um, what you're sharing. And I think that's really dope. I think that's really cool. And we can really strike uh, some solid conversation tonight um, based on what you guys ask. So you guys determine what kind of stuff we're gonna get into. Um, so ask away once you, know, you kind of kick us off yeah. and, then, uh, and we're just gonna have a good time. So I'm so excited about this, you know, I realize what I'm about to talk to you about is gonna seem like to some people that's not that important, but um, I feel that it really is. And I don't mind sharing controversial things. Now look, there are a lot of serious things going on in the world today, and I'm not ignorant of that, um, but we have to live our lives still. And I'm such a, uh, I'm so passionate about all the things that we want to see happen in our world, the revival that we want to see happen, the global evangelism that we want to see happen, the, um, the, in, the inequalities that exist in our world, to, the, I, want the, I want to see those things redeemed. I want to see your life redeemed. If you've been treated unfairly, treated unequally in any way because of the color of your skin or because of the country that you're from or because of the, uh, the part of town that you come from or whatever the reason is, and we know that those are real issues and they're very hot topics in our culture right now and in our society and I'm glad we're addressing them. I know that we can't fully heal without Jesus. We can, you know, put some topping over it without Jesus. We can kind of bandage, bandage it up, put a band-aid on things without Jesus, but we can't fully be healed without Jesus. Only Jesus can equalize us because mankind has this nature about feeling like they got to be over somebody else. And that's under the curse of Adam and Eve that that came through. But um, Jesus is the great equalizer of all people. And you and me are family because Jesus' blood connects us, regardless of the tone of our skin color. Yeah. And so that's a major issue. And mm. I, I'm not going to talk about that tonight other than what I just said. But I want you to know that I'm not trying to be insensitive to it. But I feel like our church family our global community needs just a moment of a breather from all that is going on in the world. Yeah. And I want to talk to you about how to stop feeling bad, mm. how to stop feeling bad. And, um, you know, Joseph, I think that the first few years of my life, we've talked about this the first few years of my life as a Christian, I felt bad about everything. I felt bad about my sins. I felt bad about what I, what I wasn't doing enough of, what I was doing too much of, mm. what I wasn't doing at all. If I was praying, I felt bad that I wasn't reading the Bible. If I wasn't reading the Bible, I felt bad that I was, if I was reading the Bible, I felt bad I wasn't evangelizing enough. If I wasn't winning more souls, I felt bad. So whatever I was doing, I had something whispering in my ear, feel bad, feel, right. bad, right. feel right. bad, feel bad, feel bad, feel bad, feel bad. And what was whispering in my ear, was what the Bible calls the accuser of the brethren. Mm. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, the Bible calls the devil the accuser. In John chapter eight, Jesus calls him the father of lies. So I think we all hear the voice of the accuser telling us to feel bad because we don't do enough praying. Right. We don't do enough fasting. Right. We don't do, I mean, he'll, he'll come up with anything that we don't do enough of right. or anything that we're not doing or anything that we're guilty of doing wrong He'll make us feel bad about that. And so we'll spend all day feeling bad and not feeling free enough to really feel good enough about ourselves to do good for right. others. We're so, we get so caught up in condemnation and mm -hmm. guilt and accusations from the, from the devil that we're no, 
we're weighed down with that oppression and that accusation and that condemnation so much, we're weighed down by it, that we can't help anybody else because we're just trying to carry this burden. You know, I took a video on the first day of school, if you saw it, I put it on Instagram, and some oh, of you guys yeah. might have saw it. And it's this little six-year-old with this backpack, <laughs> and he is, the backpack weighs as much as the kid, for sure. If not like, more. I, if not more. Like, I would have had an easier time carrying the kid than his backpack. <laughs> And um, this, this, this kid, though, he was so determined. Like, I think Olivia, you tried to help him, and then I tried to help him, and he's like, no, no, or somebody else, I didn't. I was just, I was, I had, I wanted to catch him on video. And, uh, and he would not accept anybody's help, but he was carrying this burden. And some of the comments were funny because many of the comments on the post in this video of this kid were, gosh, what does he have in that? in that bag. Yeah, right. And you know, and the question I want to ask you is what are you carrying Oof. that is weighing you down? Because as soon as he got in class, this is so funny, I got him videotaped all the way. You guys go back to my Instagram page or my Facebook page if you're watching on Facebook. Not now, because I need you to hear yeah. this message, but when this service is over, when, when moments is over, take a moment, another moment and go <laughs> watch that. But um, so as soon as he got in class, he drops the the backpack, and what did he say, Olivia? He said, I'm done. I'm done. He dropped, as soon as he got in the class, he said, I'm done. Throws the backpack down. He said, I don't know what he had in there. He had the kitchen sink in there, man. He had all his furniture. I don't know if he was planning to move in or if his parents told him, just stay there. I don't know what they told him, but he had a lo enough stuff to last a lifetime, it seemed. And we're carrying a load of guilt, and we're carrying a load of feeling bad, and we're, we're like him, carrying this backpack around and nobody can help us, and we don't feel like anybody should help us. We want to carry it ourselves. Sometimes we feel better that we are feeling bad mm. than feeling better when we're feeling good. And sometimes we feel guilty for feeling good. Mm. And I want to dismantle that Come on. tonight in a few moments, or at least take a stab at it. Um, so that's what I'm talking about, how to stop feeling bad. Well, I love that because with moments, we, the purpose of moments is to build momentum. Yeah. And feeling bad is a limiter yeah. of progress. I mean, just that's not like a profound statement that, that I just came up with, but that's just fact that yeah. like anytime you're feeling bad about something like you've been sharing, it stops you from doing good. And how you mentioned in your early years of, of being a Christian and having a relationship with Jesus, it, that was limiting you from yeah. moving forward. If, whether it was like, oh, I'm not reading the Bible enough, I'm not praying enough, it stops you from doing those things. Just just doing those things simply and like being good with it. Um, and so I think for tonight, this is massive for us, church. Like getting free from feeling bad so that we can um, go forward in life, move forward, um, and, yeah. and make progress and build momentum. And so. I already can feel it. Yeah, this and, is and, be and awesome. people feel bad about uh, not doing enough. People feel bad about feeling good. People feel bad about having fun. Like with all this going on in the world, it's hard to it's hard for anybody to imagine that they can celebrate. And yet, God is happy. God's not. None, nothing that is happening in the world today took God by surprise. Mm -hmm. Not COVID. Not inequality. Not the injustices. Not the political things that are going on. None of those things have caught God by surprise. And so we can't be so caught up with them that we lose sight of celebrating our relationship with God. Right. And not only does feeling bad keep me from feeling good about myself, but it keeps me from, from making anybody else feel good. Right, yeah. Because it's a negative, like if I'm feeling negative, negativity about myself and about my life and about what I eat and about what I've done and what I haven't done and what I haven't eaten, what I haven't said, <laughs> what I didn't say, what I didn't share, what I didn't come up with, what I, what a person that I didn't help, a prayer, a, a prayer uh, request that I, that I couldn't fill, uh, a, a comment that I couldn't get to. Like yeah. we can feel bad about anything. So many things. But when I feel bad, I'm of no good. Right. And uh, that negativity is contagious. Yeah. And so is positivity. Oh, awesome. And um, we have to realize that positivity and feeling positive about life and about God and about the direction that you're going with your life it's a good thing and it, it's contagious also. Yeah. And God wants us to feel that. If, Positivity is not mean, it's not, it's not secular, it's not worldly to be positive. God's a positive God. He, yeah. said, he said, 
all his promises are yes and amen. God is an affirmative God. Right. He's an affirmative God and he's an affirming God. Right. He wants to affirm you and he wants to make you feel good. Like there's nothing, like our feelings and our emotions matter to Jesus. He is touched by our feelings, the Bible says. Yeah. He's moved by our feelings. He sympathizes with our feelings. He empathizes right. with what we feel. So I've got several things just to let you know. Yeah. I've got like six or seven things okay. that we need to start enjoying. Okay. And I want to read a scripture here in 1 Timothy 6, 17. And before we do that, just a reminder, yeah, be sending them. in your questions on feeling bad, guilt, shame, anything along these lines. We have Rob who's going to be um, navigating all questions and sharing with us. And, put you on the spot to yeah, answer. Yeah, so I love being on I just on wanted the to spot. remind everybody to don't Doesn't leave us matter. hanging, send in those questions. I, so. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all about spots. I jump from spot to spot. <laughs> I, I enjoy that. But uh, for First Timothy 6, 17 says, instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited, nor to fix their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but fix their hope on God, who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. Instruct mm. them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous, ready to share. Sometimes we don't go through the whole passage here, and I want, to, I want you to see the next cool, verse. Cool. He says, storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is life indeed. Boy, we're really going to start enjoying life indeed Come on. when we s stop being conceited. So he's talking about pride there. We need to have humility. He says, instruct them not to be conceited and not to put their hope in the uncertainty of riches. Hmm. So no matter, listen, this applies to everybody, whether you have money or whether you don't have money, whether you have riches financially or whether you don't have riches financially, you can't put your hope in them. Yeah. You can't put your trust in them. He said, put your hope in God who richly supplies you with all things. Look at what he says to enjoy. Sometimes so I think we, we forget that, that those words are in the Bible. Yeah. To enjoy, yeah. to enjoy. God created us to enjoy life, to enjoy several things. And I'm not gonna give them all away. Uh, <laughs> he created us, because I want you to come back next, next week. There's no way we're gonna we get through all time. this. We yeah. won't have time. <laughs> we won't have time today. We won't have time next week. So we just got, we're just in this thing together till Jesus comes back, come on. amen. Come on. But, um, I want you to see this word um, to enjoy. In 1 Timothy 6, 17, this word enjoy comes from the Greek word apolousis, apolousis. Now, I, I spoke a Spanish word today. I spoke a Greek word today. I spoke in tongues today. I'm doing really good <laughs> in languages, man. I get an A wow. in languages. But, uh, <laughs> but the word apolousis is where we get the word applause from. So when he says, he said, God created all things richly for us to enjoy, or he created all things richly for us to be able to applaud. Mm. God wants us to applaud mm. the good things in life, um, to applaud or to enjoy. God wants you to applaud your life, applaud your day, applaud people. Awesome. Applaud yourself. Awesome. Um, awesome. Applaud God. Applaud your church, applaud your family, yeah. applaud people. God, God wants us to applaud people. He wants us to enjoy life, to applaud it, and he wants us to applaud people, to applaud things and applaud people, to enjoy things and to enjoy people. That's good. Um, our hope needs to be in the God who supplies us with these things, yeah. not in us supplying ourselves right. with these things. Seek first his kingdom, but he says, he created all things richly for us to enjoy. And I can't get away from that. So we started talking about this like a few weeks ago yeah. and the playfulness of Jesus yeah. and how he wants us to enjoy life. Oh man, I got something really special to share with you guys on Sunday about Ooh. that. Come on. So you're gonna to wanna to bring a friend to that one online, at least around the world and yeah. around our community. And uh, it's gonna bless you. But um, anyway, God created, a, he said, he supplies us with all things richly. Mm. He richly supplies. Now, can we just pause for a moment and realize most Christians don't even know this scripture is in the Bible? Or if they, if they know it's in the Bible, they certainly don't think it's for now. Maybe it's for in heaven. No, he says we're storing up great things for the future and a foundation 
but he's saying he richly supplies us with all things now to enjoy so that we can, and then he says, instruct them to do good and to be rich in good works and to be generous and ready to share. You know what? If, you, if you're not enjoying things, you're not going to want to share them with others. Right. And if, you're not, if you don't have anything to enjoy, you don't have anything to share. Mm. So we got to have things to enjoy so that we have things to share that bring joy to people. That's like asking a teenager, how is school today? Yeah. And then being like, good, because they don't want to share about it. Wow. They might not be enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a good word. <laughs> At that least was, for me. That, that was your experience. That applied yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. Hey, mine was worse than else. that. Mine was way worse than that. But, um, but I get you. That's a good word. So, um, so listen, can I just tell you something, guys? Emotional damage. Let me talk about your emotions because I'm going to, because there's like six or seven or eight things that I have written down to enjoy, but I'm not going to get into those. I'm going to get into enjoying two things today. Are you ready for this? In the few moments left that we have, I want to show you how to enjoy your body mm. and I want to show you how to enjoy your food. Oof. This is, this because is you good. know something I noticed through COVID that everybody still ate and everybody still needs to eat. Yeah. And you know, the only thing that didn't get locked down was our refrigerator back in, you know, a few weeks and months, right? Yeah. But, uh, okay, <laughs> bad joke. But listen, we have been sold a religion that demands that we dislike our bodies and dislike our food so much so that we should not like it so much that we should fast from it and punish ourselves for not being holy enough so that maybe by fasting, and I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with fasting. I think what we really need to do is fast from wrong thinking yeah. because you can fast from food, but you'll go back to the same habits. Once you're done fasting from food, then you, you know, you, yeah. you, you, you binge, you might binge eat. I remember fasting for five days once when I was younger, when I was like 20, 21, I've just gotten saved a couple years earlier. And man, as soon as, and I don't know how I did it, it was like a miracle. So if you've done it, some people have fasted for so much longer than that, and I'm not here to have a, a, a contest on our fasting on how long we, because I'm, I'm gonna lose that contest because I'm gonna get hungry and I'm gonna eat <laughs> because God wants me to enjoy my body and enjoy my food, and he wants you to as well. Um, and, but uh, I remember as soon as that fast was over, for me, I, the first thing I ate was ice cream. It was like a college, Bible study thing, uh, but there was all this ice cream there, and I, I didn't even tell anybody I was fasting, but I saw the ice cream after the Bible study, and I went right for it, and I ate it, and it just didn't feel that good. You know how it is. It felt, well, actually, it did feel good, and then it didn't feel good, because then I had to beat myself up with some guilt for eating ice cream after my spiritual fast unto the Lord, and I don't even remember. I didn't learn anything during that fast, except I'm getting really hungry each day and each hour that passes. So I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm sort of making fun of fasting, but it is, a, it is something that's in the Bible that has uh, some significant benefits, but it doesn't have benefit to you if you're doing it for the wrong reason mm -hmm. and, if you're, um, and, and if you're trying to sanitize uh, enjoyment in life. Mm -hmm. and, and I wanna say this, emotional damage and self-abuse comes from trying to sanitize our lives from enjoyment. Mm. And I want to say that again, emotional damage and self-abuse comes from trying to sanitize our lives from enjoyment. Wow. And we kind of, we kind of Christians, we kind of, we kind of, we enjoy things secretly, but we don't want people to know that these are things we can enjoy. Mm. Like you're, you're supposed to, enjoy, well, let me tell you what you're supposed to enjoy. <laughs> in Genesis chapter two, I don't, jump in here anytime you want. Uh, <laughs> I'm taking Chan notes. Genesis 2, 9 says, God says, when he created man, in Genesis 2, 9, out of the ground, the Lord made every tree good that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But notice what he's, notice what the focus was here. So many people focus on the, now, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's the last thing mentioned here. The first thing mentioned in this verse is the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Like there's nothing wrong with things that are pleasant to our sight. Mm. Beauty was God's idea. Yeah, yeah. The beautiful things in this world, have we learned this over the last several weeks, a couple months? 
the, the beauty in this world was God's idea because he is the, he is beauty itself. He is beauty itself. And he yeah. created things in his image. Yeah. And um, so it says he made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And then in Genesis 2.16, this is the first time, I'm pretty sure, it's the first time that God gave man a commandment. It's not the Ten Commandments, but it's the first command that God gave mankind when he created them. And he said, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, from any tree of the garden, you may eat freely. Mm. Notice the first command Such a good point. from God was a commandment to eat. Yeah. It, hey, now, church, I'm just, you know, looking at the <laughs> team that takes the production team that's in here. I'm just preaching to them. I'm preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself. Yeah. But I'm just trying to get an amen here, somebody. I'm trying. But, so but uh, you know, the Lord God said, he said, he commanded them, eat freely. Can, can, you, can you just pause for a moment and realize that the reason why so many Christians get into such deviance in their life and such and why we why we get into perversion and why we get into addictions and things that we shouldn't be getting into is the reason is because we're denying ourselves the concept of enjoyment mm. we're denying ourselves of the things that God commanded us to enjoy this is before the Ten Commandments. This isn't the law. Right. This is how to live. Yeah. God said how to live before sin was even in the earth. Before sin even came into the earth, the Lord God commanded Adam and Eve, eat freely. Come on. Eat freely from any of these trees. Oh, by the way, the one, the knowledge of good and evil one, don't eat from that. By the way, the reason I'm telling you not to eat from it is because you're going to surely die. It wasn't, don't eat from it because I'm depriving you of pleasure. That wasn't the one that was so pleasant to the eyes. The ones, oh man, I'm a preacher, so you gotta <laughs> let, let me preach, Come on. let me say this. Let loose. Uh, yeah, because I'm gonna show you something here. Like, you gotta, t you gotta see the Bible for what it is and take the truth in the Bible. It says here, in, if you go back to Genesis 2, 9, it says, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight mm. and good for food. All the trees he made were pleasant to the sight and good for food. They didn't even, and, and then he said the tree of knowledge of good and evil was in there too, but he didn't say that the tree of knowledge of good and evil was pleasant to the eyes, and he didn't say that it was good for food. In fact, he said it'll kill you. So you need to know something. Only in Genesis chapter 3, when Satan deceived Eve into and get, getting her to doubt God's word, getting her to stop believing God's word. Did God really say, don't eat for... She, the devil got Eve to question what God's word said. Yeah. And only then does it say, then when she saw the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it looked pleasant to her eyes and it looked good for food. It didn't look pleasant and good until she stopped looking at what God said. Right, wow. And when she stopped eating from the things he said to eat from, only when she deprived herself of the things that God told her to enjoy, mm. only then did the tree of knowledge of good and evil even become desirable to her. Wow. Only then did it look pleasing to her. Up until that time, all the other trees looked pleasing to her, but the devil got her attention away from what God said and got her believing a lie. So my goal here in the next few moments, at the, by the end of this, this moment, yeah. is for you to enjoy your body, and for you to start enjoying your body and enjoying your food. That's, I, I get it, it sounds so unspiritual, but since you still have a body, and since you still have to eat food, we might as well know how to enjoy these things yeah. rather than treat them like the heavy burdens in our lives, like the backpack kid, that we got it carrying this burden of our physical body. Oh, your, our bodies are bad, our bodies are sinful, our bodies are evil. Don't ever give your body what it needs. Yes, you need to give your body what it needs. You need to give your body water. You need to give your body um, uh, attention. You need to give your body a bath. You need to give your body food. You need to give your body enjoyable things because your body is a temple. Yeah. 
and you need this thing to drive your way through life. And yeah. you need this vessel, you need this temple, because that God happened to love your body so much that he came and lived inside of it right. when you got born again. He didn't say, you know what, I'm going to stay out here. It kind of stinks in there. I'm going to stay out here whenever you need me, let me know, but I'm going to stay out here. No, he came and lived inside of your body. Yeah. So it must be good enough for him to live inside of, so you better go ahead and enjoy it. It's good. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Sorry, am I getting loud? No. I'm expecting you guys to turn me down. When I get loud, just go me turn me down. When I get low, turn me up. But. Um, what do you think about that? <laughs> I mean, no, that's, that's, a, that's a massive issue, a, a massive insecurity, um, a massive hesitation. Um, we are so wrapped up in, in, in how we look, but for the wrong reason, not right. to enjoy it, but because we think we have to fit into a certain uh, system, we have to fit into a certain look, we have to fit into a certain category. And because we don't category. like it. Right. We're trying to make it likable because right. we don't like ourselves. But, Sometimes I feel, from my own experience, I feel like I enjoy it less if I'm trying to fit into something I'm not. Absolutely. Or try to do something that's not normal to me. And not that we should live unhealthy lives and eat whatever we want and not be careful. Well, I'm going to get whatever. into that. I'm going to get I into I hope you do, because I'm sure people good. are asking questions about this. Um, but I just think this is so, this is so applicable to us, so practical. It's, and we need this every day. You know, we really do. Look, let me just quickly tell you something about your body and then let me hit on the food thing. Yeah. Because you're not gonna wanna turn this off because I'm blessing you to eat anything <laughs> you want. I'm blessing that, I'm blessing that. I am about to bless your food. I'm about to bless Amen. the foods you've been like sneaking at the, you know, late at night, you're like sneaking it in, or you're uh, like, like, maybe if I, you know, put this in my body like at one past midnight, then it'll count parts. towards tomorrow's calories and not today's, you know? And, uh, but I'm about to bless your food. You know what? If there's ever been a moment where, you, where your food got blessed, I'm about to bless your food. It doesn't matter to me. Have yourself some nachos, have yourself some ice cream, whatever you want, I'm about to bless your food. Hallelujah. Woo! Man, that's some good preaching. I'm gonna bless your food. We, have, we talk about, all about praying over our food. Somebody wanna say grace, somebody wanna say a blessing, and then we're like, oh, I shouldn't be eating this. Uh, wait, didn't you just bless it? Like, we're either gonna bless it or we're gonna curse it. Don't do both. We're, not, we're doing both. We're blessing our wow. food, then we're cursing our food. Oh, I should, shame on you for eating that. Shame on me for eating that. Are we going to bless it or are we going to curse it? I'm blessing your food right now in Jesus' name, whatever you're about to eat. Now, now, now don't eat yet because we're not done here and I got to get, I got to put it in perspective. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. But we're about to say grace and then you're going to enjoy your food. All right. Listen, so here's, so here's what I want to say about your body. How can you, how are we supposed to enjoy our body? We're supposed to, supposed to enjoy our body by not shaming our body. Oh, you're so fat. Oh, you're so, you know, you don't have any muscle there. You don't have anything there. You, you know, you're sagging here and you're sagging there. Well, you know, there is something called gravity, people, and that is going to happen. And you got to work with it and, you, you know, let it work for you rather than against you, man. The lower you go, you know, the less you notice how low things are going. So stay humble always. But, um, but I, <laughs> I know that probably doesn't make total sense, but I want you to enjoy, listen, I want to say this again, emotional damage and self-abuse comes from trying to sanitize our lives from enjoyment. We try to rid ourselves of enjoyment mm -hmm. and we think enjoyment is evil. Enjoyment is demonic. Enjoyment, pleasure is from the devil. No, sinful pleasure mm. is, but pleasure is from God. The Garden of Eden, the word Eden comes from the same original Hebrew word that means pleasure. The, it really was the Garden of Pleasure. Pleasure was God's idea, not yeah. the devil's. Yeah. The devil just perverts it and twists it and it comes out in deviant, demonic or perverted, twisted ways when you don't enjoy pleasure God's way. All right, so the body. You gotta stop shaming it, you gotta stop hating your body. I don't care what it looks like right now. Forget about what it, you, okay, you're 100 pounds overweight, you're 10 pounds overweight, you're 10 pounds underweight. It's irrelevant to what I'm saying right now. What I'm saying is you need to stop shaming it and you need to stop hating it right now. Not let me go get liposuction or let me go work out or let me change my diet so I can like myself. You gotta love mm. your body and like your body and enjoy your body right now, on. every inch of it. You gotta, you gotta stop punishing you yourself you yeah. got to stop punishing yeah. your body 
That's so good. God doesn't want you to, Jesus took the punishment, baby. You don't have to punish yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's so good. Um, so, how, so how can we like our bodies and love our bodies? Number one, by realizing that God made you. Number one, God made you. I'm going to come back to that. Number two, God chose to live inside of you. I already referenced that. Mm -hmm. And number three, God made you uniquely capable of handling whatever you're dealing with in your life right now. You are made uniquely to handle your mm. current circumstances right now. Yeah. Um, and so these are the ways that you can that you can start liking your body and loving your body and enjoying your body. Um, I want to read a scripture to you in Psalm 139 in the Message Bible, verse 13. Everybody knows this verse in, in normal translations. It's it's um, you're fearfully and wonderfully made and all of that. But listen to this in the Message Bible, verse 13 to 16. Oh, yes, you shaped me first inside then out mm. so inside and out that's why change can only come from the inside out all right so good you formed me in my mother's womb i thank you like we got to start thanking god yeah for the body that we have now we can change it and we can adjust it and we can make it serve us but we got to start thanking god for it right now yeah thank god for it right now you get a Go ahead, you get on that scale, and it's like way beyond what you imagined or thought, or beyond your wildest dreams, like Ephesians 3.20 says. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to thank God for your body, because whatever shape it's in, it's still your body, and God still created you, and God still loves you just the way you are. Come on. Okay? You can't try to improve it until you approve it. That's so good. Approvement before improvement. That's so good. You get that? Um, he, look, I'm gonna keep reading this. I thank you, he says. I thank you for shaping me inside and out. Hi God, you're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. You gotta tell your body. Body and soul, it's like a conversation you need to have with yourself. <laughs> body and soul, I am marvelously made. Body and soul, listen to me, body. Listen to me, soul. Look in the mirror and talk to yourself. I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. Hmm. He's talking about so what good. a creation. You're the creation that's like, what a creation. Because God made you. Yeah. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. He says, you know exactly how I was made, bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I'd ever lived one day. Before I ever lived one day. Now, the reason why this is so important, and I know that we're running low on time, but I, I told you I would talk to you about your body for a minute, but let me just spend a moment on enjoying your food. People have a messed up relationship with food. Mm. Um, Food is meant to be enjoyed, not to be deprived of. Mm. The depriving yourself of good food that you like is how we end up in binge eating. Depriving yourself of the good food that you like is how we end up in binge eating. What I'm saying to you is the things that you really like, I don't know what you really like. It might be chips, it might be chocolate, it might be whatever it is, you need to have some of it. Now, you don't need to have so much of it that you get out of balance, yeah. but depriving yourself of something that you truly enjoy is what causes us to end up trying to satisfy that appetite mm -hmm. in, a, in a perverted way, either through binge eating or through self-abuse or through hating ourselves. And all wow. this stuff comes because food is a part of our emotional lives. Mm. We eat to celebrate, we eat to make ourselves feel better, we eat to enjoy time with friends and family, we eat to feed our soul. You can take anything to an extreme, but for most of us, food is intertwined with great moments and great memories in our lives. And we need to allow food to serve us those great moments and those great memories. And the way you do that is, you know what I would recommend? is have a certain benchmark of how many calories that you're gonna eat per day. 
for just this is just a suggestion do whatever you want but here's what i would suggest is have a this is how many calories is healthy for me to eat per day and this is how many calories i burn per day through my daily life and any exercise that i add to that and then eat your favorite food within that limit of calories and supplement it with other healthy things and other things that are good for you but man make sure that a part of your daily uh, calorie intake is something you really love to eat that's cool and then you won't then you will stop thinking that it's associating it with with um with negativity and associating it with something bad yeah wow it's really simple that's awesome I'm, i know it hasn't been simple for me for, for, for forever but i'm i've come to the realization that God created all things richly for us to enjoy and we need to learn how to enjoy each of the things that he created and food is one of those things and anyone who's, who's tried to lose weight knows oh you got to throw out the bad food you got to move in with chicken breasts you got to become best friends with chicken breasts you got to you know you got to eat your veggies but pizza pasta cookies those are evil those are adulteresses you're committing adultery with those foods <laughs> So if you if you love brownies too bad for you, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. See, this is what we tell ourselves, and those are lies. Mm. Those are lies. Um, if 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 it's true that skinny feels good, it better taste as good as ice cream because I'm going to eat some. <laughs> um, depriving yourself is not psychologically healthy. It's stressful, mm. and it leads to depression and a comp and comp compensatory overeating. You end up overcompensating with overeating wow. because you deprived yourself. It's not healthy. An overly restrictive diet can be great to lose weight in the short term, but it's not healthy for you mentally or emotionally in the long term. It's better to eat. It's and get rid of the last supper mentality. Like this is the last supper. Mm. So I'm gonna, this is my last supper that I'm going to eat for the next 48 hours. So I'm going to just eat anything I see and anything I see. I'm going to eat. I'm going to you know. I love seafood. Anything I, if I see food, I eat it, right? But um, I know, so bad. Uh, That's a good one. Um, oh, you guys haven't, heard, I got some other ones. You guys haven't heard some of these. Wow, I, this is so good reaching young people because they haven't heard all my old jokes. Hallelujah. So I know we're running short on time, but um, yeah. deprivation leads to, leads to bitterness. Mm. So I want you to figure out what, you, what foods you like and pick you know one uh, pick like five or six things that are your favorite things to eat and then include one of those favorite things every day in your diet and in your routine and one of those things that fits within a, a legitimate or a reasonable calorie amount right so because you can go crazy with this you can do an extreme on anything but bitterness comes from depriving ourselves of the good things that God created us to enjoy. So that's, that's, that's for now, I think, for time's sake, yeah. that's, that's I think that, how we go with. I think that statement is so key, along with what you said earlier. You said, in order to improve yourself, you have to approve yourself. Yeah. So I think if we, if we catch those two principles, if anything, and I, maybe I'm misspeaking, but the, the things that are sticking out to me the most yeah, from tonight for sure. is that uh, improve, approve, and then improve, and then uh, deprivation will lead to bitterness and I and think that's so key. Yeah, and you gotta just deliberately eat the things that you like to eat as a part of a healthy diet. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not trying to tell you to just go crazy, but I'm trying to tell you that you. To, um, we're blessing your food in a minute. Um, <laughs> do we, do we yeah. want to take one or two questions? Real yeah, quick? we'll t we'll take a couple questions and then we can maybe answer some questions tomorrow in daily bread. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, and on social Let's media. Let's take one or two now and we'll yeah. answer those. Let's do it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, very hungry right now. I know. I'm about to bless you. <laughs> sure. So, we'll, yeah. Here, I got a few questions to come in. We got a lot actually. So maybe like I think it'd be awesome to hit some of these tomorrow too. But um, I got one from Heather that said she asked, uh, "How do you deal with people in your life trying to guilt you, guilt trip you?" Um, so we're just relationally feeling bad. Just by oh yeah, because our because sure. our whole theme is to stop feeling bad. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah. Um, so when how do you people, deal with people guilt tripping you? Well, you just have to, you have to ignore it. I mean, you have to, you have to realize and you have to embrace God's verdict of you. 
because other people have their verdict, but God's verdict of you is not guilty. Mm. God's verdict so is not good. guilty. You know what? I want to encourage everybody. If you would read Romans chapter eight, that's your assignment next till the next time I see you. Read Romans chapter eight. It's such a beautiful chapter about freedom from guilt and mm. condemnation. It starts with there is therefore now no condemnation. So you have to you have to value what God says yep. and what God's opinion of you, what God's verdict of you is over anybody else's verdict. We, we have to look, we've all done things wrong, but we don't have to feel bad to be forgiven. Mm. We have to receive forgiveness as a gift from God That's good. through the blood of Jesus. Not God doesn't give us forgiveness if we feel bad enough first. We don't, God doesn't shame us into repentance. It's his kindness that leads us yeah. to repentance. So ignore people Oof. that are not kind to you. Be kind to them, yeah. but don't value and give weight That's to awesome. their opinion of you. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I love it. One it. or two more. Let's sure. do that, and then we'll, we'll let's, carry let's this on. Let's at least one more. Yeah. Um, this is from LLCC, not to be confused with LCIC. <laughs> They asked, what do you do when people reject you? <laughs> I'm not laughing at the question. I'm just laughing because Chandler's laughing behind me. Uh, what do you do when people reject you because of your looks? Um, and this could be, I think, you know, even if people haven't like straight up rejected you, but you feel rejected because of your looks. Yeah, this is why, that? This is why the recipe for you is to enjoy your body, you have to choose to enjoy your body. Why? How do you enjoy your body? By stop shaming it, stop hating it. Don't embrace people's rejection of you because God made you and God chose to live inside of you. So that person is seeing one fragment of what you're about as a yeah. human being. Yeah. And they're judging you by one fragment, but God sees everything and he dives into you. Right, like right. he digs you so much, hey, like that. He digs you so much, <laughs> he dives into you. Yeah. What a God. Mm. Like we have to, how, this is the same, answer is the same to all the rest of the questions too, until tomorrow. Listen, the answer is the same. God loves you, God likes you, God made you, God chose to live inside of you. He had options and he chose to live inside of you. Yeah. He could have chose Hawaii. He could have chose Alaska. He could have chose, <laughs> I don't know, he could have chose Saturn. It's such a cool planet, isn't it? Mm. But he chose to live inside of you. Wow. And when you get a hold of that, people's opinion of you loses its power. Love your body, enjoy your body tonight and enjoy your food tonight. First, I wanna pray for you, then we're gonna bless your food. First, I wanna pray for anybody who's watching right now who's still hanging in there with me after all this craziness. <laughs> and you're not saved. I want to, I want to lead you to Jesus Come because on. we're having fun because even in the midst of di difficult times, the Bible says, be of good cheer. Even in the midst of tribulation, rejoice, count it all joy, praise God anyway, enjoy your life anyway. We take things seriously, but we can't take ourselves so seriously. But one thing we have to take seriously is we're going to spend eternity in one place or another, either heaven or hell. And Jesus is offered and made a way for us by yeah. substituting for our sins. Jesus has made a way for us to spend eternity with him in heaven. Would you join me in this prayer to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? So when you die, you go to heaven and be with him. Heavenly Father, just pray this. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ, I invite Jesus Christ into, my life into my life as my Savior and Lord. As my Savior and Lord. I believe, I believe Jesus died for my sins. Jesus died for my and sins. And rose from the dead. And rose from the dead. From this moment forward. From this moment the forward. Blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus has cleansed me. Has cleansed from me all my sins. From all my sins. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. really all there is to that prayer and to salvation. Jesus did all the work. All we're doing is receiving him yeah. into our lives. And there's a little book on your screen that you can get. You can download my book, The Power of a New Life. It's absolutely free. You can download it anywhere in the world and just click on lifechangerschurch.com slash connect and it'll navigate you to that book, The Power of a New Life. And um, now let me bless your food, everybody. Come on. I want you to enjoy your body and enjoy your food because God said he created all things richly for us to enjoy. And that starts with us enjoying ourselves, enjoying ourselves so we can be a benefit and a blessing to other people. And we can start appreciating other people by starting 
with ourselves and appreciating ourselves and enjoying ourselves. Yeah. Father, I thank you for each person connected to me right now who may have suffered through the shame, through rejection, through guilt, through feeling bad about themselves, always feeling guilty, always feeling like they don't measure up, always feeling like they're not approved of. Lord, I thank you that you approve of them. You love them and they will give them the affirmation Give them the affirmative, the affirmation, the assurance that they're free from guilt and free from condemnation in Christ. And Lord, teach us to enjoy our bodies because you made them, to enjoy our bodies because you chose to live inside of them, to enjoy our bodies because you made us uniquely for our set of circumstances. And Lord, right now, we want to also enjoy our food. You created all things richly for us to enjoy and we're all going to eat. So Lord, we might as well enjoy it while we're doing it. In Jesus name, we bless the nachos. We bless the tostitos. We bless the doritos. We bless everything you're about to eat in Jesus name, in moderation and wisdom, yes. but in sheer enjoyment. In Jesus' name. I love you guys. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Amen. Thanks for hosting this. Oh, yeah. Moments is incredible. And we're going to get to more questions. We'll be Tomorrow. talking about this more, so don't worry. Um, but next it was, week, too, yeah. It was so important that Pastor spent more time on what he had to say because it's so good for us. So yeah. thank you. It's great. I hope and, it encourages uh, you. Enjoy the rest of your night, and we'll see you guys on Sunday for church. Can't wait. Love you guys. It's going to be awesome.